Yo, what's going on, guys? This is Mustache MMA. Welcome to episode 11 of Parlay Plays, UFC 273, Volkanovski versus the Korean Zombie. Great card we got here. Two title fights, people's main event in Burns versus Chemaev. A um, couple other really fire fights on the main card as well as throughout the prelims. Excited to watch these fights for sure on Saturday and um, excited here to get into a couple different parlays I got going on here. So again, breaking down the how I do my parlays, um, I do uh, one unit plays on even money parlays. They're anywhere from about even money to plus 200. Half unit plays on my juicy parlays. They're anywhere from like plus 300 to plus 800. And then quarter unit plays on my long shot parlays. Um, they are usually plus a thousand or more. Um, so yeah, before we get into the parlays for UFC 273, I'm going to go over the results of last week's parlays with, um, or two weeks ago, uh, Blaze versus Dalkus. So we went three for three, uh, three wins, three losses, uh, three out of six, 3.5 units in play, returned five units um, for a net of plus 1.5 units. Um, so pretty much broke even on the day because um, our best bets went pretty much uh, a little slightly over negative of 1.5. Uh, but going specifically into these parlay plays, let me zoom out a little bit here so you can see that. Um, so even money parlays, they went two for two. Um, Saldana, Saldana and Souza fight goes the distance. Magni Griffin fight goes the distance, both cash. Um, and then... Uh, Second, um, even money parlay, Dikatze versus Borshev over 1.5 caches. Um, the second leg of this parlay was voided. Olenek Latifi was canceled that fight. So technically not a parlay, but it still cashed. Um, I don't replace my voided legs if it happens. Um, and then uh, Juicy Parlays went one for two. Uh, Fiort decision, Grasso decision, Blades KO, TKO. Two of three legs hit Grasso, getting the first um, first round sub. I'm pretty sure first sub in her career, of course. Um, and you know, Joanne would uh, disappointing me because that would have been a nice payout, um, but it does not hit. And then um, the second juicy parlay again, Latifi by decision gets voided, but um, Nikolai money line and over 1.5 hits, um, so that also catches there. Um, and then over two on the long shot parlays, Nikolau decision, Askarov sub. Uh, Askarov actually lost to Kai Car France, impressive performance by Car, Car France. Um, and then uh, additionally, Gutierrez by decision, Borshev by decision. Both those lose as Gutierrez gets a knockout uh, in the second, and um, Borshev gets wrestled to death by Di Gatze. Um, so, yeah. Pretty decent, um, although two of those winners were only one leg, um, still came in the positive. So yeah, uh, let's get into our UFC 273 parlays. So first we're gonna start with the even money parlays. Again, one unit on these guys and they're anywhere from even money to about plus 200. So first one I got here is uh, Volkanovski and the Korean Zombie. Fight starts the fourth round, and Jan Sterling, fight starts the fourth round. Um, plus 116 over on DraftKings. I like both these fights to go to the championship rounds. Now, uh, our featherweight championship fight, Volkanovski, Korean Zombie. Again, Volkanovski is, um, you know, just a much better striker, in my opinion. Korean Zombie might be able to hold up a little bit, um, but he's going to take punishment from Volkanovski. But the Korean Zombie is tough. And his last two finishes um, that he's lost a via finish. Um, one came in the last second of a five round fight and the other came in the fourth round to prime Jose Aldo. So Korean Zombie's tough. He can take damage. He's going to take a lot of damage. I look for him to definitely survive and I'd like for him to go the distance. However, uh, he could get finished in these later rounds, fourth or fifth. Um, but I do think he's going to be able to survive one through three for sure against Volkanovski. Um, moving on to the other fight, Jan versus Sterling. Um, fight starts the fourth round again. Um, I keep saying again because I, some of these fights I go over um, or I go over all the fights in my best bets video, um, but I literally just recorded that, so I keep saying again. But um, 
If you didn't check out my best bets video, check that out. It's also on my channel. Uh, I'll link it at the end of this video as well. Um, but anyway, Jan versus Sterling. I don't see Sterling getting a finish here at all. Um, only chance is submission, and Jan has proven that he has good takedown defense, good get-up game. Um, Sterling's also not getting a KO on Jan. Jan's striking defense is too good. Uh, so the only thing we're fading here is a Jan KO, TKO on Sterling, but Sterling's really tough, man. Only finished once in his career by a hard knee up the middle as Sterling, I think, was dipping into a takedown, perfectly timed by Marlon Marais and out cold. So... Um, Sterling has take, taken damage from other guys before. He's been dropped by Jan before in his last fight. He's been able to recover and keep going. Um, so I like both these guys definitely last until the championship rounds for sure as well. So again, that's Volkanovski, Korean Zombie. Fight starts the fourth round. Jan Sterling, fight starts the fourth round, plus 116 over on DraftKings. Moving on to our second even money parlay. Again, one unit on this. Um, Julio Arce and Santos, fight goes the distance. Lad Pennington, fight goes the distance. Plus 135 over on DraftKings. Um, again, I, I like Arce here to probably win via decision. Um, I don't think, I mean, again, we haven't seen much tape on Santos, so he could be very good. He could prove that, you know, he's in the UFC for a reason and he can fight top-level competition right away. But Arce, again, he, He's, he's top-notch, man. He, he's fought good competition. He's beaten good competition. And he's barely lost to good competition. I, I think he's a top 25 fighter in the Bantamweight division, to be honest. Um, Santos making his UFC debut, two years layoff. Most of his wins by Cairns, to be honest. Um, when he did fight one guy uh, who was pretty good, uh, he lost via decision. So there you go. Arce, not much of a huge power puncher, to be honest. Uh, but he can put things together. He's got a solid head kick as well. He he got a finish over at Julia Rosa with a nice head kick. Um, and he, he also finished with some punches, got a finish with some punches over. Um, ooh, I, I forget his name, but not the best of fighters. Like it, it, it should have, he should have won that way, if, if we'll say, say the least. So. Santos, again, he's never been finished in his career. He's pretty durable. I've seen him take some shots on the few, the very little tape there is out there on him. Um, so, yeah, I, I do favor that one to go the distance for sure. Um, and I favor Arce to win that by uh, decision. Uh, our other leg here, we got Lad Pennington fight goes the distance. Both these ladies, super tough, super durable. Um, Lad does have a little bit of power in her hands, um, but at the same time, Pennington's tough. Um, she's got good striking, but these guys, girls have good strikings, um, good striking. Um, both these girls, super tough, can take damage. I mean, Lad did get finished in like 10 seconds by Duran, Duran, I mean, um, but at the same time, I mean, it was kind of an early stoppage. Uh, Pennington has gone up against girls like Duran, Duran, I mean, Holly Holm, um, just gone Andrade, and she's she survived all of them. And I believe she survived um, uh, with Amanda Nunez for a while. She didn't go the full distance, but uh, I believe she lost in the later rounds and got finished by um, a submission. So anyway, yeah, like both those ladies to um, definitely go the distance as well. So Orse Santos, fight goes the distance. Lad Pennington, fight goes the distance. Plus 135 over on DraftKings. Moving up to our juicy parlays. Again, half units on these parlays, anywhere from plus 300 to plus 800. So first one I got here is um, we got Torres by decision and Jan by decision. Comes at the plus 440 over on Fandle. Like I said, my best bets video, um, you know, I think Torres has a really good shot of winning this here, and especially by decision. Reason being, she's got really good takedown defense. Mackenzie Dern, to win, needs a submission, in my opinion. And if Tisha Torres keeps this one on the feet for pretty much all the fight, she's good. Now, she's been taken down before, but she shows a really good get-up game as well. She's hard to control down there. So that may prove to be difficult for Dern. But at the same time, if anyone were to do it, Darn could probably do it. So 
I like Torres to stuff most of the takedowns and Mackenzie Dern throws at her. Again, Mackenzie Dern doesn't have the best wrestling, best takedowns anyway. So she's going to look any way she can to take this one to the ground. Obviously, Torres is better on the feet. I like Torres to piece Dern up and get the decision win um, and, and keep it on the feet for pretty much the whole fight. Um, also, we got Jan decision for the second leg. Um, again, I like Jan here. I just think he's better than Sterling. It may be a close fight, to be honest, but... At the same time, I mean, Jan, his striking defense is just so solid. His takedown defense is so solid. His get-up game is so solid. Uh, I mean, Sterling put on a crazy high presser, pay, high pace in the first uh, fight. He ended up winning the first two rounds, but it looked like he was going to lose. He lost the third. He was probably going to lose the fourth. And, you know, at, at that rate, it's looked like he was probably going to lose the fifth as well and lose the fight. Um and he even lost the first, too, because he got dropped. Um, but again, you know, is Sterling going to be able to keep up that pace like he did, you know, in that first fight? Uh, I don't think so. That was a crazy high high pace fight. So I like Jan to win this one. I think he's got the better striking, good striking defense. Um, again, if Sterling tries to take it to the ground, uh, I just don't think it's going to be successful because his takedown defense is too good. His get-up game is too good. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Recapping that, Juicy Parlay, Torres by decision, Jan by decision, plus 450 over on Fandle. Second Juicy Parlay, we got we got uh, Kay Hansen by submission or decision, a little double chance, and Marco Madsen by decision. Comes out to plus 674 over on Fandle. So first leg here, Kay Hansen by submission or decision. Um, I think this is a bounce back spot for Kay Hansen here. She's going up against uh, a contender series um, alum who's coming in on her first UFC fight. Um, to be honest, she didn't look all that impressive on the contender series. Um, she does have some first round power for sure and good striking, but her cardio seems to not be all there. She definitely slows in the second and the third, whereas Kay Hansen has proven that she has really good cardio and go all three rounds pretty solid. Kay Hansen also, you know, durable, tough. I think she'll be able to take the shots of Rodriguez. Um, also, I think she's going to be able to work in the wrestling here a lot better than her last fight, work her grappling game a lot as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if she got a late round sub in the second or third. Um, but I also wouldn't be surprised if she got a decision win, um, winning the second and third round, maybe dropping the first to Rodriguez because Rodriguez may, you know, come out throwing hammers. But yeah, I like Rodriguez to uh, get that sub in the later rounds or win a decision, probably a close decision. Um, but I like her to win the third for sure. And the second, um, you know, we'll see if she can implement those takedowns in the second, maybe even the first either, and maybe even in the first two. But, uh, but yeah, I do like Hanson by submission or decision. Chance for a ground and pound TKO, but I don't know. Pereira, uh, or not Pereira, I forget her name. I just think Rodriguez. Uh, Rodriguez is, is pretty tough, pretty durable. I would think that if she's getting pounded on, she would try and move positions, but... You know, always a possibility for that to happen, but I, I favor the sub over the KO, TKO. So, double chance, sub, decision, Hanson. Um, second leg, Marco Madsen by decision. Um, going up against Vince Michelle, again, it's going to be a close fight, but, you know, I favor Madsen here because he's going to have a much better wrestling advantage here. And um, he's, you know, Greco-Roman wrestling silver medalist in, from the Olympics. He is some of the best in the world. So, you know, Vince Michelle, he doesn't really have great takedown defense, but he's a really solid get-up game. And he is hard to control on the map. But I think if anyone can do it, it's going to be Marco Madsen. And I think this is going to be Vince Michelle's toughest test in terms of a wrestler, in terms of, um, you know, a high-level wrestler. He hasn't necessarily faced that in his career. Actually, he did um, with Gregory Gillespie. Gregory Gillespie. Um, and he got finished in the second but again, I don't think Madsen has like the finishing capabilities that Gregor Gillespie has. So I do like Madsen to win the first for sure. Um, you know, be a close second and maybe Michelle takes a third. But Madsen could take all three with his if he implements a game plan to really get good top control over Michelle, which I do think is gonna happen. So um yeah. Recapping that juicy parlay. Hansen sub or decision and Marco Madsen by decision plus 674 over on Fandle. Moving over to our long shot parlays. Uh, these are quarter units, uh, quarter unit plays plus a thousand or more. 
So first one we got uh, is Mike Malott by decision, and then Gary and Weeks fight goes the distance. So first leg here, Mike Malott. Uh, I, I do like him to get the decision here. I mean, I just think, um, oh, who's he fighting? Why do I forget? Mickey Gall. I just think Mickey Gall here is um, really tough. I mean, he he's never he's been finished once in his career by Diego Sanchez via ground and pound. Diego Sanchez is is pretty solid fighter back in the day for sure. Um, you know, Mike Milano, I, I he does have good striking, but I, I don't think his striking is like as amazing as it seems. Um, and then at the same time, Mike Milano has good grappling as well. But I think Mickey Gall is grappling to be able to defend it. Um, a lot as well. A lot of his wins come in the first round. So, you know, cardio is a little bit of a question mark. You know, how is he going to react after going potentially hard in that first and not getting the finish? Um, you know, Mickey Gall could come back and get a win, but I do Michael like him a lot to win a clear and concise first round, maybe even getting a 10-8. Um, but Mickey Gall surviving because he's tough. And then, you know, second could be close, but I'd lean um, a lot as well. And then maybe make a guy taking the third. But at the same time, both these guys don't have the best gas tank. Um, so, yeah, once Malat slows, you know, his finishing power is going to diminish. Um, and Mickey Gal, I think, is going to survive this one. Um, and then the second leg here, but I do think Malat is going to win. Um, second leg here, we got uh, Gary and Weeks. Fight goes the distance. Um you know, again, I think Weeks is super durable guy. He's never been finished in his entire pro and amateur career. The one finish in, in, his, in his amateur career was a doctor stoppage. So, dude never got knocked out, never got submitted. Now, Gary, a lot of finishes on his, um, you know, short pro career, 8-0. Um, um, but at the same time, man, I think Weeks is even live here to maybe get um, a win, potentially. I mean, he, he's got good cardio. He throws high volume. He's well-rounded like, like Gary is. Um, Potential, you know, areas for wins here. I mean, Gary, yes, he's got good striking. He's got some good power as well as we saw in his last fight in the first fight in the UFC. Uh, but Weeks, again, you know, never been finished. He's tough. He's durable. He can take shots. Um, Gary does have some submission skills as well. So maybe if Weeks throws a lazy takedown in the later rounds, uh, Gary could snatch up that neck. On the other end, um, Gary, you know, never been finished in his career. Um, you know, eight and zero. Uh, but Gary, I've seen him in his regional scene get put through some close submissions and his, him be able to get out of it. And, and Weeks doesn't have that amount of crazy submission skills that I think that the fight will put Gary through. Um, and then maybe a knockout by Weeks. I mean, yeah, Jordan Williams did. Uh, did he rock Gary? I think he I don't think he rocked him, but, you know, he, he connected a lot. But, you know, again, I think Gary's tough. I think he's got a heart. He's durable. Um, I think both these guys are durable. So, again, I like this one to go the distance, Gary Weeks. Um, recapping that, long shot parlay, Mike Mlott via decision, Gary Weeks, fight goes the distance, plus 1,080 over on Fandle. And our last parlay of the day and second long shot parlay, uh, we got Hernandez via decision and Olinick by submission, plus 1650 over on DraftKings. So the Hernandez via decision is a little bit of a stretch, but I do like it at the odds it is. Um, individually, it's plus 500 with the Olinick submission comes out to 1650. Um, actually, plus 600 over on DraftKings. Um, so Hernandez via decision. Um, you know, he's going up against a guy on short notice, sure, but um, his opponent, I'm mad because I keep Josh Framed. I was going to say, I keep forgetting their names, but it came to me the last second. Uh, Josh Framed, he, he's decently well rounded, man. I mean, he's got good submission skills, um, he's got good grappling skills overall, good wrestling overall, good striking overall. Hernandez, on the other hand, he's also very overall a good fighter. Um, but I do edge Hernandez in each of those categories. So I think Fremd is going to be able to survive early. And Hernandez is used to getting early finishes, first or second round. Frem, you know, same for him. So, you know, after these guys go past the first round, if it happens, 
Um, what's their cardio going to look like? What's their ability to finish going to look like? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, Hernandez has had a couple finishes in the second round. Uh, most recently, his Rodolfo Vieira fight, as well as his um, win over the Iron Turner, Iron, Iron Turtle, uh, both finishes in the second round. Um, but uh, man, I, I like Frem to potentially be able to survive this one, and I like it at the odds. And I do favor for sure Hernandez to get that win. Um, on the other hand, uh, second leg, uh, Olenek by submission. You know, this one's a little tough, but I, I do favor Olenek to win this one. I mean, I just think any way he's going to be able to drag this to the ground, he's going to want to do. Um, I don't think – I wanted to say Josh Parisian. That's not his name. Van Der, Jared Van Der. Um, I don't think Jared Vandera is very good on the ground at all. If he does get taken down at all and Olenek gets on top, I think it's over. I think he gets the sub done. Um, now, Olenek, he could get pieced up on the feet, but he is tough. He's durable. Um, Vandera doesn't necessarily have crazy power for sure. He's more of a volume guy. Um, and if Vandera gets on top, it, it could prove trouble for Olenek as well. But he has shown ability in a lot of his other fights to – get sweeps or work his way to a single leg reverse position. So as long as Olenek eventually gets his way on top, I think he wins. I think it's the sub. We'll see if he can do it, but I do favor that the most likely outcome of that fight. Um, and I like it added with the Hernandez decision um, to potentially juice that up pretty good. So again, um, last long shot parlay quarter unit, um, Hernandez via decision, Olenek by submission, plus 1650 over on DraftKings. That will do it, guys. Uh, appreciate you guys for watching and listening over on Steady Picks Radio. Um, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. Uh, leave any comments down below if you like my parlays, dislike them, got any parlays of your own. Um, additionally, uh, for you all, for you guys on Steady Picks Radio, um, leave a like button or a comment or whatever, however it works over there on Spotify or Apple Apple Podcasts. Um, that'd really help them out as well. You know, they do a lot of great work with their stuff on their platform. Um, also, I forgot to mention in my other video, but follow me on Twitter, uh, mustache underscore MMA. Um, I come out with a lot of early Twitter plays, although I didn't have any for this card, unfortunately. Sorry about that, guys, if you follow me. Um, but I come out with a lot of early Twitter plays, and they tend to beat the line, also tend to win. So been pretty successful with those. But uh, that's about it. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. Appreciate you all. Uh, looking forward to these fights on Saturday. Peace out.